I am <laughs> Reverend Spaceman. We're we're we were in we're not in the loop. We're not even anywhere adjacent to it. We're out of the loop. Yeah. Cue the theme music. We don't have any. Out of the loop. That'll work. So this is for those of you who might be joining us for the first time. Uh, this is the the thing where me and Dave, who have seen no movies in our entire life, just like four of them. Yeah, like not even the good ones. No, because like I saw Lord of the Rings and that's it. Not seeing the good ones. like Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo, Happy Feet, and Cars Two, and Minions, that's and Minions. Yeah. yeah, your favorite movie <laughs> of those four, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> So the yeah we since we we challenge each other to, to watch movies because we have huge lists of movies that we haven't seen. Last time it was what was it last time The Martian and American Beauty. With two films you'll never hear in the same breath ever again. <laughs> last time we basically if you want if you just want to waste like two hours, a good hour and a half of being me just railing against The Martian. It was about an hour and a half total. An hour of it was you reviewing The Martian. You were objective. I liked it. I try to be. A good 15 minutes of Interstellar sprinkled in there, because we both like it a lot. Yeah, it was a good film. It's a good and film. And I'm all in on the reconnaissance now, so yeah. I'd like to rewatch it. You should. I got, I'm I, in on the reconnaissance. I, I have it. You can borrow it recently. recently. I, did, I did purchase it recently. Interstellar? Yeah. Okay, cool. For like three bucks. So what did we watch this time? Well, I watched Liar Liar. That's right. And I watched, watched Requiem for a Dream. The director's cut. Yeah. That's how that song Beautiful, goes. Beautifully scored. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, beautifully scored. So yeah, Both movies, probably. Generally, when we're doing this, we go for first impressions. So, Mr. Spaceman. I'm sorry, Reverend? What, Reverend. Were, what were your impressions Dr. of this Dr. Spaceman. Dr. Reverend Spaceman? Um, Dr. Reverend Doctor? Dr. Spaceman is a role played by Chris Parnell on 30 Rock. I do enjoy him. That is kind of where my name comes from. So... Before going into Requiem for a Dream, all, I, I knew vaguely of it. I'd seen the trailer once before. I knew, you know, it was about drug addiction and stuff, and I knew that it, that it was where that song comes from that everyone's heard, and it's been in every trailer ever. And a bunch of, uh, it's a great a, 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 and a bunch of AMVs on YouTube. That's an anime music video. American They're not music good. videos? They're not good. Um, I didn't really have any expectations going in, except I was, from your previous two choices for me, I was kind of like, well, this is going to be something artsy. Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of the that's kind of the trend I've noticed. I don't know that I would say American Beauty is like an artsy film. It's like all kinds of artsy. Yeah, it's... <coughs> compared to uh, what what we... Oh, we have Jordan with us, yes. by the way. Hey, I'm the microphone guy. Toy yeah. Owl. Toy Owl. Check it out on Rev Space, man. It's on this channel. Probably in the related videos. Yeah, you guys you guys, you guys always like to have a, <laughs> a live audience, whether it's just me or the regular 50 to 100. Yeah. We couldn't get everyone tonight, so I'm I'm the lone audience member. So I'll be chiming in For here sure, and there. That's right. You're the best of us. No, no, of course not. I made reference. See, you're humble, too. That's <laughs> what the best person would say. I mean, just... I, I, I can't thank you enough for your compliments. I don't know if I'm worthy or deserving, but American Beauty was an artistic film. There we go. At least it's an artistic film, and it is a piece of art. It is an artistic film. Um, don't even. <laughs> I'm kidding. But it's, it's, it's not like a, it's not like an art house film. It was like a wide you know, release studio film. Okay, but um, Requiem for a Dream, the one that I watched this night. The one, yeah. Let's get back on topic. Right, yeah. Because we're so usually on top of it. So that that was kind of my first, I guess, impressions, my, like, expectations going in. I didn't really, I I didn't really expect to like or dislike it. I was just kind of like, I hope it's better than American Beauty. And I was surprised. I was not surprised. I was um, glad to say that it was. I don't know if I'd say it's better or worse. I would just say it's different. It is different. Because they're both... Fantastic films, in my opinion. In a, it's different in a better way. So, what are your fir- what were your first impressions of Liar Liar? <laughs> my first impressions of Liar Liar, <laughs> just the tonal, complete tonal opposite. <laughs> the film, um, it's definitely a film I have been told to see a lot of times, mainly by U two. Yeah, um, almost entirely by U two. Yeah, <laughs> by the band U two, Bono and the Edge and Adam called me up all the time. We're just like, you seen Liar Liar? <laughs> like, no, Adam, I haven't. Paul. All right. Um, yeah, so I knew Jim Carrey was in it. And 
I like Jim Carrey, and yeah. uh, from what I've seen, he seems to have more range than a lot of those funny guys. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I knew it came out in the 90s. That's about all I knew from it. <laughs> Did you expect to like it or dislike it? I think I knew what it was. I think I knew it was like about a lawyer. Um, I had fairly positive expectations, but I tried to go in open minded. That's fair. And uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I did enjoy it. All right, so. So we have so much to talk about. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I guess kind of a plot synopsis is what we do next, usually. I so I feel like I feel like Liar Liar is going to be a lot simpler. <laughs> Possibly. So maybe a little bit. So Requiem for a Dream. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with Requiem Yeah, let's start with, yeah, yeah, let's let's start with start the difficult with one. Well, I mean, we're doing back and forth, you know, so. Yeah. All right, so the plot of Requiem for a Dream. Who? Based on a novel. Yes. Um, directed by Dr- Darren Aronofsky. Everyone's on drugs. A Wayans. I did not expect to see a Wayans in that this. That was maybe my biggest surprise of the movie. Yeah. It was like how good he was. So we... <laughs> we basically open up with Jared Leto, Wayne's guy. The Joker? Yeah, maybe. Before, yeah, before Possibly he was the Joker. Could be, could, could, you could make that argument with all the technology. And, but, um, anyways. By the way, spoiler alert. You so he came out that. before Suicide Squad? Yes. So, everyone's on drugs. All the heroin and uh, Jared Leto's mom. What was her name? Ellen Bernstein, the actress. What was the character's name? <sighs> Off the top of my head, it's been a little while. Well, anyway, um, she likes to watch infomercials, like, constantly the same one all the time. And, um, so she, she gets a call that says she's going to be on TV, and she's like, oh, well, I need to lose this weight so I can fit into my red dress. Her name is Sarah. Okay, Sarah. Sarah wants to fit wants Thank to fit you. into her red dress, and uh, her son Henry. I remember his name. Harry. Harry. Whatever. Gold Close Carter enough. Ring. Close enough. H names. Yeah. Jared. Jared. <laughs> comes he comes to visit her and he's all like, Ma. Don't, you can, you can kind of tell he like regularly like, takes advantage of her. Yeah, he, he like borrows her TV for stuff and like, Ma, I'm gonna get you a new TV and I got a job and whatever and. It's just lying to her because yeah. he just does drugs all the time. Pretty much. But then, like, she finds out that she's taking amphetamines, and he's like, you know, don't do that. Those are bad. Okay? I feel like she's not even really all that aware of it. Yeah. Which, and, yeah. And I feel like her story is kind of the most heartbreaking. Pretty much, because it's, like, she really just Yeah, she's really just kind of a lonely old lady who, yeah. you know, like, I kind she of, thinks she's going to be on TV and kind of gets taken advantage of and wants to lose weight yeah. in this dress, and then... I mean, she goes she horribly does. from there. Yeah. yeah, she fits in the dress. I'll give her that. So, <laughs> goals achieved. <laughs> and she sees herself on television, technically speaking. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah I kind of followed her story more, because it was more, I guess, I don't want to say grounded, but it was easier to follow, kind of easier to thread through. Or, uh, yeah, because there is a whole, like, summer, winter yeah. change of seasons that's sort of happening could get a little confusing. Yeah, and you know the Jared story is a little like a little more like crazy and I, it's it's linear. They're more it's, on the streets. Him and yeah, the, Ty, his friend Tyrone. Yeah, and his girlfriend uh, Marion. Yeah, better than I am. Thank you. Tyrone is actually what I'm naming. I have my moments. <laughs> I'm getting a Gundam for Christmas, and I'm naming it Tyrone because it's black. Because of Marlon Wayans. Now, he was really good in this movie. He was. Everybody was really good in this movie. Yeah, yeah that's a little, little foreshadowing. Toyal. So. Because you're watching this in preparation. It's like, oh, there's not a new Toyal. I guess I'll listen to this crap. That's right. <laughs> this is the filler podcast. <laughs> it kind of is. Because this is so much easier to edit. We, Yeah, we in, in no way uh, claim to be anything but filler. <laughs> For your lives. We are a waste of your time. Yeah. But isn't that what every podcast is? <laughs> Pretty much. So, yeah, she's she's taking these amphetamines, and then she kind of uh, like these real. She's taking them to lose weight, but she's kind of realizing, oh, I'm getting high off of these. And yeah. then, at, you know, at a certain point, she's realizing they she's don't have addicted. the same effect on her, and she starts taking more and more. And then suddenly, she starts feeling a lot of effect on her. That's the kind of how drugs work, kids. That is, yeah. Don't stay do in school. 
Well, I guess, but... Dare. Truth. What's, What's your, your favorite, favorite anti-drug, anti-drug campaign? campaign? Truth or dare? Are those both anti-drug campaigns? Yeah. Really? That's the joke. It's a Nick Thune joke. Yeah, you're right. It is. It's it? it's it's a somewhat <laughs> smart joke <laughs> for a somewhat smart audience. Well, truth is more about cigarettes, isn't it? Now that I think about it, I think you're right. Yeah. But it's still it's clever. Yeah, nicotine's a drug. Whatever. Yeah. So it's caffeine. Yeah. So it was food and water. And then the red. <laughs> it's all a conspiracy. <laughs> so then, yeah, Jared Leto, Wayans, girlfriend. That's her name, right? Marion? Yeah. Their story is the more, like, complex one that's, I guess, more, like... It feels like it is the main story, but, like, it's also more insane and harder to follow. Well, they're all just kids on the street dreaming yeah. about, uh... Yeah. yeah, pretty pretty much they're... They decide to get into the dealing to deal... to So they can get more money to buy drugs. Yeah, because so they, they kind of want to be their own drug kingpins. And, yeah. You know, have everything they ever wanted. Yeah, and you get your, you know, your, mon- your, your like, quick blink-and-you-miss-it montages of them getting high all sprinkled out. I guess you'd call it a montage. Yeah. Does that, it, doesn't have a, it doesn't have a triumphant song playing to it, but... Not know. really a triumphant song kind of movie. So, they're plot basically the way I understood it was just instance after instance of things going wrong for them trying to get more drugs to sell heroin I believe specifically uh, as far as I remember yeah, they it's been a little bit since I've seen it cop show like uh, Wayans is in like a limo and then he's like you know trying to score from some, some, from some deaf guy but then turns out the driver is I think a cop or something or Rival drug guy, but he shoots him. Shoots a bunch of them. Yeah, I thought it was so like a rival person, drug maybe. thing. I don't know. He said, like, it's a white guy, so I assume it's a cop. Because all cops are white, and they all shoot black people. I saw a lot of cops tonight. Yeah, I heard That's that. just a, a thing that happened to me. Yeah, we'll have to talk a little bit about that off air. But, uh, yeah, definitely off air? Off air. But, uh. I'm intrigued now. Yeah, I forgot all about That's that. That's the part you guys aren't even going to get to hear. Yeah. Just slurring my speech. To hell with you. So sober. So I, I really am, that, though. It's just the sad part. <laughs> and after that, there's like a, a whole another buyer who's like in the back of a grocery store, and that goes south too. So they end up like there's like so many people there. Yeah. So they end up like, oh, we gotta go to Florida to get to this guy, or um, Marion. There you go. Made Marion. Yeah. Can go. Fuck this pimp guy. Yeah, and kind of where her story winds up going. Yeah, and both of those things happen, and then and it ends not well for everybody. Yeah, um, I guess we're kind of getting to the ending of it now. Jared Leto has this whole thing. He's got a very where he infected, shoot, yeah, where he yeah, shoots up. Uh, very infected. Arm. Does not look good, and he keeps shooting into it. That cannot be good. No, and as it turns out, it's <laughs> not. Yeah. So he, yeah, him and uh, the Wayans guy get. Tyrone, whatever. Character Tyrone names, Wayans? Actor names. Yes, Tyrone Wayans. Uh, they get arrested when they finally take him to the hospital. They go to jail for it. Obviously. Um, Maid yeah. Marion ends up in like an uh, eyes wide shut ass yeah. type orgy room. Um, pretty much she's, she seems the happiest though. Yeah, I oddly enough. Yeah, she. Yeah. I mean, she she fucks for money, but she, she gets does terrible. get what she wanted. Yeah. Whereas Jared Little loses his arm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Sarah winds up in a mental institution. Yeah. And they keep doing like weird like things to her. Yeah, of all of them, she seems like the most like a victim. You know? Cause oh yeah, yeah. You could just she could go to rehab, or you know, you can put her through all these weird treatments that really. Just make it worse and worse. Yeah. And then, yeah, Tyrone just ends it's up in... It's very sad. Yeah, Tyrone just ends up in jail, and he's having, like, withdrawal. So he's not great either, but... Oh, it's pos- he, the most positive, maybe? Yeah, his, his probably has the best chance for turning out good for him. Yeah. Which hopefully we'll get in the sequel. It should be coming out pretty soon. It's about time for the Requiem for a Dream sequel, right? <laughs> I mean, they're doing a second train spotting, so... 
Yeah. And Anything's up for grabs these days. Pretty much. Doesn't matter <laughs> the Donald Trump amount am, amount right. of years because <laughs> like there were some movies that just wouldn't be touched, and then you see all these other studios be like, "Hey, we made this much money off Ice Age Two. Yeah, we should do another sequel for a good movie." Yeah. Studios. What? So yeah. that, that that's the end of the movie. There's no post credit scene, unfortunately. <laughs> They didn't do that back in the nineties. Yeah, I guess that. So that's liar, liar. You want to start synopsizing the plot? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> so, because uh, I won't remember the names at all either. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Anyway, Fletcher Reed is like a pretty successful lawyer, um, and it, as you Jim kind Carrey. of see him, to, yeah. yeah, as Jim Carrey kind of goes through his day, you know, you just see him telling little white lies here and there. Yeah. You know, these. Some guy in his office with a pimple or something. I don't know. Some weird deformity in his face. Like, that looks fine. <laughs> just kind of little things around the office where you you just, you know, they're telling us he's not the most honest guy. Yeah. Which fits into his profession as a lawyer. But he's also got a kid. Uh, who he seems, yeah, Max, who he seems to be, uh, thank you again. Who he seems Maximum. to be. <laughs> you got it, Mike. Yeah, why, why are you yeah, like we seem, I thought, does anyone else have more comments? Questions? We got Fletcher Reed, successful <laughs> lawyer. His son, Max. His ex-wife, which is Audrey. I keep replacing her with... I keep, yeah, I keep I'm trying to remember. I keep replacing her with uh, Rachel Green in my head, even though I know she's not. Yeah, they've got like a similar look. And t- everything? Similarly, and similar kind of hair. talk the same. Too. Yeah. And it was during that time period. Yeah, it was 1997. like the Friends era. So, but, yeah, liar, liar was. No, we had Ace Ventura, The Mask, Dumb and Dumber, all in '94. Wow. That's when he blew up. Yeah, '95, Ace Ventura, when Nature Calls, and he did Batman Forever that year. '96 was The Cable Guy, then Liar, Liar '97, which was his first leading role where he's playing a normal guy, so to speak. A lawyer, yeah, which was, yeah, it was, I mean, it's the first movie where he's the leading man and he's playing a normal character. I didn't so hate to speak. the cable guy. What? I didn't hate the cable guy. Actually, it was all right. It's, it's a dark, dark comedy. Yeah, it you, is. You learn to appreciate it, I think. Yeah. Over time, a little more. I think but it's probably. It's, it's kind of. It, yeah, it's weird. It is weird. Yeah. Speaking of dark comedies that might age well or not, I saw The Lobster recently. I hated it. Did you? <laughs> I need to see it. I liked it overall. It gets a little boring, but it, it's a very strange movie. Yeah, I kind of get what it was trying to do. It just, to me personally, it didn't relate. It was just, it's similar to uh, Swiss Army Man that came out with uh, Daniel Radcliffe. It, I just, I'm not really into those films, but I kind of understand what the Lobster was trying to do. Just to me personally, it didn't hit home. Oh yeah, it's definitely not for everybody. And I don't know that I would really rewatch it. But... I know it's fine. I don't regret watching it. I know things about it. I just need to actually see it. Yeah, I mean, you know? go for it. It's 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 definitely one of those things that's not for everybody, which means that you might like it. Yeah. It's experimental. Yeah. No, it's very... Uh, it's worth a watch. It's very dark in its way and has... It definitely has its own sense of humor. That's fair. But different from the cable guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, somebody knows their Jim Carrey pretty well. Yeah. Well, speaking of Jim Carrey, I guess he was where in this movie that liar, I watched liar. called Black Liar. Yeah, where are we with that now? He's but just anyway, gonna... he's got this kid Max, who he seems to be a pretty good father too. The Claw. Yeah, I guess that's what fathers and sons <laughs> do, right? I wouldn't know. Oh. <laughs> what about dark comedy? <laughs> right here on Reverend Space Man. <laughs> he's not for our audience. He's not dead. I have divorced parents. <laughs> That's slightly better. I get. I mean, I hung out with him recently. He's a good guy. Yeah, divorce doesn't. Yeah, that's that's a positive place to come from. Divorce doesn't necessarily mean you've had like a horrible time. I mean, yeah, We're getting I, deep, dark, and personal in this episode already. I guess Requiem from a Dream kind of set the tone. Yeah, this is like the darkest review of Liar Life. Awesome. <laughs> like divorce. I have divorced. <laughs> I have divorced parents like Max. 
There you go. Uh, yeah. And, it ties uh, back in. A surprise turn from Carrie Ellis is a uh, very, like, very vanilla uh, Jerry. Not Cantrell, <laughs> fortunately. My favorite Jerry of, well, I was, yeah, my favorite Jerry of the nineties. Very close. He's kind of tied with Jerry Seinfeld, but you've got your comedy guy and your brilliant guitar player. What more could you want? Buzz, 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 buzz. Who did a better claw? Yeah. Fletcher or Jerry? Oh, Fletcher. Here's the claw, Dave. I'm coming in. I'm handing he you the mic. He does like the one finger. It's the claw. It's the claw. <laughs> hey, you champ. You want to throw some ball? <laughs> yeah. Baseball <Jerry>. stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't tell if he was. I guess he was trying to be very vanilla and whatever he was there. But how much of that was like he's trying to do an American accent? Because I've noticed when he was on Seinfeld, good segue. He did seem to struggle with that, as a lot of actors do. As B movie struggled, I like it though. Yeah, I, I don't even know that that movie is even really. Relevant. It's kind of the way I look at Scooby Doo and Kiss. Like I don't know who that movie is for. <laughs> Like if you enjoy Jerry Seinfeld, <laughs> you will like it. You'll like that movie. But much like Scooby Doo and Kiss, right it's like now. Jordan. Is it, about, cause it, is it really geared towards Scooby Doo fans? I don't know. Is it really geared towards Kiss fans? I'm not sure. <laughs> probably both. Pro- probably the. Over- There's is some it overlap. in that weird overlap? It's from that same like era. Yeah. yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's not for kids. I don't see how this appeals to kids at all. Well, they've appeared on Scooby Doo before. Yeah, that was like they they show up as like the guests, you know, in like a Batman, and Robin, and yeah, Knotts and not so much back then. Like, it was like in like two thousand, early two thousands, in the the what's new Scooby Doo era. I'm not. They showed I up on a Christmas episode. Kiss Christmas. <laughs> I don't like that song anymore now that I know it's Simple Plan. But anyway, um, he's so that's kind of the setup. But anyway, so Fletcher is working a lot. And he's got to put bread on the table and yeah. whatnot for his son. He's got to afford the claw and whatever. <laughs> but anyway, he in just a very 90s move, uh, he misses his son's birthday party because he's got a big case. Yeah. Um, which apparently seems to happen a lot. Um, so Max wishes on his when he's blowing out his birthday candles that his dad couldn't tell a lie for just one day. I don't know if the just one day part was in it, but I, I think that was the whole thing. It was just yeah. one day he couldn't tell a lie. Which happened to be in the biggest case of his life, naturally. Of course. Um, so, as he starts to discover um, that he can't lie anymore, uh, some funny stuff happens. I've had better. Yeah, he's trying to make people squeal, and <laughs> which proves how good of a father he is. Yeah. He can't even show up to his kid's birthday. Yeah. While he's on the phone with his son and ex-wife, he's you know, doing client stuff. Like you said, making people squeal. <laughs> yeah, like how she, <laughs> she just flat out like like asks, "What were you doing?" And he just says, "Sex." <laughs> I hope it was someone very special. He's like, "It wasn't." <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, hilarity ensues. Yeah. Um, what is the case about? Case is like this it's a custody, rich, yeah, yeah, custody thing with uh, wants... this super rich this woman trying to divorce this super rich yeah. guy. Yeah, and um, was that pretty? Was that the case? That's basically, that's basically it, it. Custody, or she was wants... it like she's trying? He's divorcing. It's a divorce um, custody yeah, like, thing. Yeah, nineties divorce. divorce yeah. The d- divorce custody. She wants the kids, even though it's <laughs> portrayed that she's a bad mom and yeah. the dad's the better parent that should get the kid, but. She, yeah, Fletcher's obviously trying to help the mom win. Yeah. He, he learns a lesson. It's somewhere not. The, in it's there. it's not that difficult to get a mom to get custody of the kids. No, especially back in the nineties. Oh it's yeah. Like if, it's it's better for fathers nowadays, but it's not great. Yeah. And this was six, uh, 18, 19 years ago. <laughs> yeah. I can't do math. <laughs> it's been a long day. It's late. Patriarchy. Orally. Yeah, patriarchy. Yeah. Whatever. But anyway, What's that male um, privilege? back yeah, back at home, we're all so accustomed to. Yeah. Go on. Dead air. <laughs> but anyway, back at home, um, Jerry wants Diane or whoever her name is to move with him to uh, Audrey. To, they're gonna move to Boston. Boston. 
for Jerry's cool new job is whatever he does. <laughs> I want you and Max to come live with me in Boston. What do you say, Hunter? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. He wasn't important enough. No. He was just way too cheesy. God. That's all I can focus on. Yeah. The claw. He wasn't a person. No, he like he was so fake yeah. and forced everything. People don't it was Oh yeah, yeah, no, it, no I'm, I'm saying that, that was a good yeah. job. I'm saying of his character. Yeah. He's supposed to be he, that goofy and yeah. phony and That's the kind of person that's how he all, is. little kids would just hate him. Yeah. That's true. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're doing a much better job <laughs> explaining this to me. I've seen this like a hundred times, so I saw it a lot when I was younger. I haven't I haven't seen it in a good few years though. I think I need to revisit it since I own it. Yeah, now. That's, a, that's the thing. I've I probably haven't watched it all the way in full in a couple years, but it's always on TV, and I'll yeah. sit down and watch a couple minutes of it. And yeah. Try to quote it, but I rem- actually remember when this came out in theaters in '97 because I wanted to see it because I like Jim Carrey already at a young age, and my parents wouldn't let me see it. It wasn't even R-rated, was it? I mean, it was PG-13, yeah. but I was like five when it came out, yeah. but I saw it couple years after on VHS. Yeah. But yeah. It shows I'm old since that was 19 <laughs> years ago. So yeah, yeah. this then uh, he he learns a lesson about loving his son and stuff. It's very 90s. Yeah. It's very over the top. It's very Jim Carrey. Absolutely. I enjoyed it. All right. A, po- a positive episode. We've actually had more of those than I would have yeah, thought. Yeah. It's really weird. I don't like it. <laughs> My ne- hopefully my next movie you'll be a little more ambiguous about. No, oh, I can't. If, if it's what I think it is, probably. Possibly. And if yours, you don't know what it is, but you haven't spoken highly about some about another <laughs> film that some of these guys were in. Great. The pen is... R- 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 the pen is... R- r- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can't even write a lot. The pen Some is blue. Some deep magic that is just not explained at all. The goddamn pen is blue. It's birthday wish magic. It's the magic of a child's wish. Yeah. I tried the next, the same thing next year <laughs> for my for my birthday, and it didn't work. For yeah. My parents. So. Is your mom did move to Boston with Jerry. It was actually New York, <laughs> but close enough. And his name was Jim. As, as close as you could possibly get. I wish for roller skates. And then his parents get back together for some reason. <laughs> yeah, there's like that it's random like, just one year later yeah. shot where it's his birthday again. Yeah, Jerry's just gone. Yes. <laughs> I think he died on that. Like on that, I think that plane crashed after they got out. Probably. Like he, yeah, he goes. Jim Carrey Fletcher goes to save his family. He gets on the... Desperate measures. He gets on the blue stair car and chases after them. Yeah. Which is totally possible. Which yeah. definitely happened. Definitely can In go as fast as a plane. Today. Yeah. <laughs> he loves his son. Yeah. I do like that you could really get away with all that stuff in the <laughs> yeah. 90s. It would just not work today. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? I mean, I think we're getting... We're, so it was great about comedies, I, though. Yeah, I think, Who cares? I think we're rearing up to an era where, like, people are going to make ironic 90s parody movies, and they'll kind of be able to do some of that, hopefully. I hope so. So I guess that's Liar Liar. Yeah. I guess that's Requiem for a Dream. Yeah. Ratings. All right. So, well, my thoughts are... Yeah, final thoughts. Requiem for Dream is a pretty great movie. It's brilliant. I liked it a lot. Um, nitpicks here and there, but on the whole, I'd say you know I enjoyed what watching are those? <laughs> your face when you said that. Or like, <laughs> just just little things like I, you know I said like one. Like, oh, Jared Leto's hair isn't as good in this scene. Yeah, that that's really dumb. <laughs> no, it's. I mean, there is no such thing as a. <laughs> just, just more like yeah, there's no such thing as a perfect movie and. It's more, It's. I guess it's more of a thing, a preference thing. Like, I've noticed, and you've said yourself, you like characters more so than plots, and I like plots a little more, so... I get this one was You're a little... wrong. <laughs> Just that this one was more... In my opinion. Your opinion's wrong? I'm gonna sound like Jake now. Yeah, Jake is wrong about things sometimes. Yeah, you Don't let him hear you say that. We all are. If he listens to this, he's gonna hear me say it, yeah. but we're, we've all been wrong from time to time. Love you, Jake. 
It's what I say whenever I insult someone. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it's just a preference thing. I you know I like more plot driven. You like more character driven things. I noticed this was more character driven. That didn't make it bad for me by any means. But uh, how could it's a fantastic yeah. movie? How could you think it was bad? It is a great movie. And it, yeah, it, it's a yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Just notice noting a preference. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, on the whole, I guess, rating, um, I'd give it a good 8.5 out of 10. Okay. Alright. Okay. You got so fi- I guess, final, final well, yeah. thoughts on Liar Liar? Yeah. Um, you gotta give it a Dave rating, but let's hear your thoughts first. Thoughts overall, yeah. Um, great 90s comedy, um... Good old Jim Carrey doesn't yeah. let you down. He's very Jim Carrey. Yeah, it's kind of the definitive Jim Carrey movie. Uh, well, let's turn it over to Jordan. <laughs> well, it's the one that like yeah, that's the one that yeah. kind of lasts the longest, and that you, at an older age like now, would yeah. go back and want to watch and be generally entertained. Yeah, uh, my personal favorite's Dumb and Dumber. That's fair. That's. That that whole from ninety four to really ninety seven ninety eight when he just kind of owned yeah the comedy game, I would probably rank Dumb and Dumber and Liar Liar are the best movies. I really love Ace Ventura stuff and I love The Mask, but that's what I grew up with. That's what yeah. I have a history with. But Liar Liar kind of is that definitive when you go back and think upon his career when he retires yeah, he, or quits acting, which yeah. he kind of has sadly, yeah. just doesn't do a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, that he's never going to reach that peak again. Oh, so no, I, looking back, Liar Liar and Dumb and Dumber are always going to be that gold standard when you talk about his career Cause, because he started out with a bang. You know, he had three huge box office releases in the same year. That just doesn't happen anymore. It's crazy. But yeah, come, like looking back on it, Liar Liar will kind of stand because more people can relate to it since he does kind of play a straight man. And it's like, so to, it's you the know, one in a that, way. It's the one that the most movies after it seem to have kind of tried to emulate. Like, uh, Yes Man. Yep. F- it feels like a retread of Liar Liar. And I yeah, like that, yes was, man, that was the beginning. Yeah, like he did Fun with Dick and Jane. Yes. Uh, yes Man. Uh, later stuff that are funny in their own rights, but just doesn't reach the no, uh, same good. level. It's not as good as Liar Liar, but I, I did yeah. enjoy those movies. Oh, yeah. Enough. Yeah, they're fine. And it's him being him. It is. So they're it's good. not going to disappoint. Maybe you should watch those next day. Yeah. If you feel um, like it. It's not required. Uh, they're, they are on the list, believe it or not. But I don't know if you're going to make me watch them anytime soon. That would accelerate the process. But if I don't think I would like to. Else, I might. I know you have something for this next one. Yeah. Unless you wanted to switch it. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, I liked it overall. I think my rating would be a yeah, series of still shots of the sky over North Dakota. Yeah. And also any, a plane. Got any nitpicks or whatever, things you didn't like about it? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'd, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah honestly, the kid. The kid. But mm, I could say that about most movies with kids, to be he, honest. Even then, he's not among the worst. <laughs> no, he's yeah, he's not great. <laughs> but I've, I've had seen better. worse. I've seen worse. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's Jake Lloyd. <laughs> Jamie. No, he, he's, he's fantastic in that film. He is. <laughs> Talking about another little blockbuster of 1999 that will go unnamed. <laughs> it's, not, yeah. it's not a blockbuster. <laughs> Jake Lloyd was great in Requiem for a Dream. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. he, he was Tyrone, right? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, they're probably a little things here and there, but I, no I movies kind, of, kind of excuse those being a 90s comedy. Yeah, that's fair. Alright, All right. so we uh, want to prepare for next time. Yeah. Got going? Let's hear yours. Alright, so yours is the uh, Antoine Fuqua classic. Though, I don't know how you're going to feel about it because you didn't care about uh, his recent pairing <laughs> with Denzel and Ethan Hawke. If you haven't guessed it yet, Training Day Sure. Yeah. All it's right. a great film. All right. And Denzel is amazing. Let's get yours. Most, most think it's his best performance, so. And he's got a long list of great performances. 
So, yeah, so this enjoy. Is, so this is the... I haven't seen enough of his films. It's the Mediocre I Seven guy, right? The Magnificent Seven. The Same mediocre. director, and I think the first time Ethan Hawke and Denzel have been back together since. Okay. Well, I hope I'll surely like this better than that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I will agree. <laughs> it's a much better film. Okay, yeah, I enjoyed right. The Magnificent Seven well enough, but this is a much better film. I struggle to stay awake. All right, so let's get yours ready. I'm kind of Throw at that roll. point. Yeah. Something I've kind of been, I've been telling to watch it for a while. I'm standing up. Oh, well, I bet I know what it is. Yeah. Uh, you've. Is it one of like the Evangelion movie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I knew it. Wasted the good surprise on you. Yeah. It's the first in the so far trilogy, but there's going to be a fourth one eventually of the reboot movies. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is literally years in the making. Yeah. Over the like year and a half it took me to watch the series. Yeah. <laughs> it's got robots. You'll you'll you might like it more than Pacific Rim. I mean, there's a pretty good chance of that. It has to be better than that terrible movie. Actually, let me even see if I have this on DVD and not just Blu-ray. We're going to have a big podcast special for when Pacific Rim 2 comes out. Yes! Like pre- and post-watch. My only my only interest in that film is uh, Stephen and I. The only one? You don't like robots? You don't like Finn? You don't like black people? You racist. Your words, not mine. <laughs> Ouch. But you just gave him training day with Denzel. Yeah, I just I just uh, praised one of our greatest black actors. There, I said it. <laughs> Wait, say that again? The greatest blacker of all time. 